Hey everybody, it's Wilbitz. We are playing Ace Attorney Investigations 2, Prosecutor's Path. And we are outside the Grand Tower Temporary Film Lot with all of the cameo characters hanging out together. Uh, um, could you please give it a rest already? The heck? I'm telling y'all, it's best for y'all's sake to come clean. The staff has their lips sealed, shut as the reporters continue their tenacious negotiations. Uh, if you're not here to cooperate with the investigation, ha, huh, I must ask you to vacate the premises. Put a sock in it, copper! Y'all couldn't even stop Mozilla's invasion! Not only did they secretly raise a giant monster, but now the staff is trying to cover it up! Like I said, we haven't been raising any monsters here at the film lot. We, we make it. It's movie. It's visual effects. It's visual effects. But ain't you said you done saw Gordy yourself? Sure, I saw it, but it's not like we were keeping it at the film lot. Mind if we butt in? Oh, mind if we... <laughs> hey, it's the central cast! Ah, Mr. Edgeworth! Hey, John. Oh, y'all come here to search for the monster, too? We're searching for a criminal, not a monster. Lang Z says... The darkness inside a criminal's heart can be likened to a monster. Well, when it comes to killing people, criminals aren't much different from monsters. Agent Lang, uh, this is a problem. I can't let outsiders enter the crime scene. These are all key figures in the case. I'd like them to be here when the investigation resumes. I guess, I guess Langsy is used to running an investigation with 99 officers, so... There's so many sprites! We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 people here?! Jeez, that's a lot of people! That's a crowd! Agent Lang, regarding what you said about resuming the investigation, where do you intend to start? We'll start by reviewing the case. Today, the body of President Huang was found here at the film lot. The president's whereabouts from two nights ago are still unknown. It seems he snuck out from under the eyes of his bodyguards and ventured outside. And that night was the last time he was seen alive. Tony met with you, Judge Courtney, on the roof of the Grand Tower. So why did you meet with the president? That I cannot say. You can tell us, even the suspicion of murder. I can't say. Why not? Miss Courtney, if you don't say anything, you'll only be more suspicious. You gotta have something. Ha! <laughs> she must have a reason to clam up. I think you're somehow involved in the president's assassination. Objection! The president's body was only discovered today. That still leaves a blank of one whole day after Judge Courtney met him with, met with him unaccounted for. Not so fast. Don't be so impatient. We're gonna fill in that blank right here, right now. The evening on that blank day in question is what's important. What happened here last night? So why don't you tell us, John Marsh? Me? We know you were here last night. What? John was here? He was supposed to be in bed, the naughty boy. Between that little Missy's testimony and the footprints we found, we can easily prove it. John, you were rehearsing here last night, right? You were spying on me? Uh, um, I'm sorry, I, I just came to check up on things. You really shouldn't be staying up so late, you know? Mind your own business! What? John Marsh, that young lady was worried about you. You will not speak to her like that. Sorry. How many times have I told you to be more mindful of the way you speak? Uh, is it just me or does Miss Courtney's personality seem kind of different? She seems to be as strict with her own son as she is with those who violate the law. Are you 
listening to me and earlier as well. You're in trouble, John. You should always bear that in mind, no matter what the occasion. Not so fast. Can we get on with the investigation already? Ah, pardon me. Judge Courtney to get carried away like that. This must be her motherly side. Agent Lang, do you suspect John? All I want is the truth. Why was the president killed? And I want to know who killed him. I'll do whatever it takes to find out. It seems the president was like family to him. John, would it be alright if we asked you a few questions? Sure, it's fine. I got nothing to hide anyway. Intense child. I wasn't feeling too great during yesterday's shoot, so I made a few bloopers. They're reshooting the scene today, so... Well, I decided to rehearse a little on my own. That's all. I do it all the time. There wasn't anything out of the ordinary. You were rehearsing alone that late at night? John, when I called you last night, you told me you were at the hotel. You called him? About what time was that? I believe it was around 11 p.m. I require him to call me every night. That's our rule whenever he stays away from home. The truth is, I was at the film lot during that time. So you lied to me? <laughs> I'm sorry. Miss Courtney sure is angry. I think it's admirable that he practiced on his own, even if he hid it from his mom. I'm sure he was, she was simply worried. Who knows what could have happened to him out alone so late at night? And in reality, he did get caught up in yesterday's incident. But John said there wasn't anything out of the ordinary, right? Is that really the truth? Something must have been not ordinary. I wasn't feeling too great during Estes shoot, so I made a few bloopers. On purpose? Like, funny ones? Did you, like, crack a joke and then look at the camera and... Huh? John, you said you didn't feel well. Could you tell me more concretely what was wrong? That doesn't matter. I just wasn't feeling well, right? You weren't feeling well? Maybe you drank too much milk? What? How'd you... Uh, no, I mean, that's not it. Are you lactose intolerant? Then maybe chill out with that. So he didn't feel well because of his stomach. When I was young, I was told that chewing milk makes it easier on your stomach, you know? Chew, chew, what? What kind of milk are you drinking? Th this conversation's over. Anyways, I made a few bloopers. They're reshooting the scene today, so... Hold it! So they plan to reshoot the scene today, and you were practicing for that last night. My mistake caused a lot of trouble for the people around me. I'm a pro, so practicing that much more is natural. Hmm, he certainly does have an admirable sense of responsibility. John's incredibly dedicated to his craft. He didn't even make any major mistakes in the bloopers. But he said if it would make the movie just a tiny bit better. Shut up! You don't need to go around blabbering about stupid stuff like that! Uh, uh, I'm sorry. If only he was a little more cooperative, I'd have no complaints. <laughs> anyway, that's what happened. Well, I decided to rehearse a little on my own. That's all. Hold it! John, about your testimony just now. John Marshall, I always tell you, if you're going to practice by yourself, you have to let me know beforehand. I, I, I know. My time to speak was completely stolen away from me. I shall ask you once more, John, about your testimony just now. But you know, John, I think that's really great. Mm, again? I bet putting in an honest effort like that will make someone even more talented. You go from a little thief to a middle thief and then someday you'll become a great thief. It's like a Pokemon, right? You know, I got a thief stone and then I evolve into me. 
I'll be doing my best. You do your best too, okay, John? Ahem. Now then, if I may. John, do you often rehearse in that way? At last, at long last, I finally got to ask my question! I do it all the time. There wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Uh oh. Hold it. There are no mistakes in that testimony, correct? Uh, of course there's no mistakes. I was just a normal, peaceful night. Nothing out of the ordinary happened at all. Uh, a peaceful night? How can you say that when an incident like this has occurred? Okay, he's still a child. Please don't get seriously angry. So there was nothing out of the ordinary. Doesn't know anything at all about the incident. That's the impression I'm getting. But isn't there evidence that shows something did happen last night? Yes, I don't have time to waste dealing with a child's lies. Let's present the contradiction. Okay. So I made a few bloopers. There wasn't anything out of the ordinary. So what was out of the ordinary about... Taken yesterday, the body and the monster's footprints are not visible. Do we have footage of... That's them on the rooftop. Oh, I think it's here. John's practice video. There are monster footprints! That's out of the ordinary! Objection. There wasn't anything out of the ordinary. That's a lie, isn't it? We have evidence right here. Uh, could that be? That's right. It's the video you recorded of your performance. Uh. What? You're telling me you have video from last night? Exactly. And in this video, there is clearly something that is out of the ordinary. This is a monster's footprint, or a, a huge Pac-Man's face print. Would you say that monster's footprints are commonplace on a film set? I mean, yes, but they weren't there before, so... John, why did you want to see this video from us? No, re no reason, really. Not so fast! Hey, pup, this is no joking matter. You had a reason to hide it, right? John Marsh, answer him clearly. But, Mom... Well? I didn't want anyone to see me rehearsing. Uh... Hmm. In other words, you're embarrassed about others seeing you practice. Yeah. Got a problem with that? Not so fast. You're saying that's why you hid the evidence. John! Quit nagging me! You've already busted me. What more do you want? Yeah, the footprints were there, but I just practiced and headed home. How come you so calm at finding those footprints? They're scary! I'm scared! They're here right now and I'm scared! It's a monster, you know! A real live monster, I hope! I thought it was just a part of the set. Besides, there's lots of other weird stuff around here, too. Hey, suspicious, Chief? This kid's really suspicious? You're right! The smell of his goop sinks to high heaven! Shut up! We're done talking! Objection. We're not done here yet! What now? The monster's footprints weren't the only unusual things that happened last night. Besides the monster's footprints, what other unusual thing happened last night? Um, I would say that there was a crime scene. Somebody became dead. This. Is it in that same spot? Take that. This shows what happened. Oh, it is not. Hmm. And just what exactly does it show? You don't understand, do you? You are still a child, after all. I don't need some guy who's less intelligent than a child telling me that. Uh, no, it seems that wasn't it. 
Let's review what happened here last night one more time, okay? Alright, you seem confused, you're going in the wrong direction. It's not where the game wants you to go. <laughs> yes, I won't let this child make a fool of me any longer. Why are we getting so worked up? Why are you getting so worked up about that? Anyways, just what was it that happened last night? Besides the monster's footprints, what other unusual thing happened last night? So, not the dead body. Uh, last night, the other unusual thing that happened, other than the monster footprints, this is something obvious that I'm confused about. Oh. Is it the, the Muzula's head fell? That also happened last night. Let's try the head. Take that. A monster's head fell from the roof of that building. Surely you must have known about that. Uh, I don't know anything about it. Is that true? I told you, I just practiced a bit and then I went back. I don't know anything about Mozilla's head falling or anything like that. Or do you have evidence to show that I know something? There certainly isn't any evidence of that. It's also possible that it fell after Jordan had already gone back. If there's no evidence, then like I said, we were done talking. It seems that Jordan doesn't really want to talk about last night. Could he be hiding something, after all? Not so fast! Wait up! Agent Lang? <laughs> it's as I thought. Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. This video backs up my logic. Huh? Is there something in the video that's related to the case? Yeah, take a good hard look at the monster costume in the top left. The Mozilla costume? Try comparing it with the one over there right now. Oh, it looks like he's just hanging there limply though. And the zipper on its back is zipped up tightly. Zip on its back. The, the discrepancies? Yeah, the difference is plain to see. In the video, the zipper is clearly open. That's right. Someone was inside. What? Mr. Powers, is the costume zipper usually? Uh, it's always zipped up tightly when it's not in use. Uh, Mr. Prosecutor, do you remember my logic from before? Two nights ago, Courtney pushed the president off the roof and killed him. Afterwards, she snuck into the film lot to hide the body. In here? Wouldn't it be easy to hide a body in a costume or behind all this equipment? Then, all she had to do last night was retrieve the body. You're saying the body was hidden inside the costume? Yeah, that's right. Judge Courtney, two nights ago, you pushed the president off the roof of the tower. You then hid the body inside the monster costume. I, I did no such thing. Not so fast! Say what you want, but you're the only one who could have done it. Objection! That should have already been proven impossible. The film lot was locked at the time. Judge Courtney could not have entered this place. Not so fast. And what if there was an accomplice? What? I'll tell you my reasoning, so listen up. Oh, uh, we're gonna try to get John thrown in too because he was able to go into the lot to practice because he works there. When the president was pushed off the roof, John was waiting at the film lot. If John was an accomplice, the problem with the locks would be resolved. The two of them hid the president's body inside that monster costume over there. You think this crime had such an elaborate plan? To take the life of a nation's president. An elaborate plan is to be expected, don't you think? Overruled! John would never take part in such a crime. Not so fast! You're the one being suspected. Your words don't carry much weight. 
I wouldn't think those two had sufficient motive for something like this, though. Well, maybe they had a motive that we didn't know about, huh? You were the last one to meet with the president, and you're still keeping the details secret. Don't you think it's only natural that you're being suspected? <clears throat> Judge Courtney, is there no way of you to tell us your secret? <clears throat> My apologies. I just cannot. No matter what. However, when the time I can talk about it comes, I will surely let you know. So, if you could please... Believe you? Is that what you wanted to say? <laughs> That's what all criminals say. And you, pup, if you've got an explanation, hurry up and spit it out. I didn't do nothing. That's all I'm saying. Both mother and son won't talk. You're still going to defend them like this? It's true, Judge Courtney's actions are a mystery. However, we still don't know whether or not that ties in with a motive for murder. Yeah, that's right. Their motive for murder can wait. For now, let's talk about the situation surrounding the crime. And the fact that these two are the only ones who could have done it. Okay, let's see. Look, he's just, it's just, it's just so speculative all the time. When the president was pushed off the roof, John was waiting at the film lot. Hold it! Agent Lang, don't tell me you're saying John was an accomplice. John still looks like a grade school kid. He's even got a kitty backpack to boot. How could he be an accomplice? There's just no way. Like I said, John's already in the middle school, huh? and the backpack is a part of his costume. Not so fast! Lengzi says... <laughs> no matter how young the cub, never pity an ungrateful pup. What, is that? what does that mean? He may be a little brat, but a villain deserves no mercy. Uh, so Mr. Langsy didn't make any allowances for age? Mr. Prosecutor, you're not just defending him because he's a pup, are you? <laughs> of course. That was never my intention. I shall present suitable evidence in due course. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. My logic's just getting started. If John was an accomplice, the problem with the logs would be resolved. Hold it! How would that resolve the problem? I figured you'd ask that, Mr. Prosecutor, but you know, it's actually quite simple. Listen up. First, that woman pushes the president off the roof. Um, she pushes him off. Then that brat, who knew the combination of the lock, unlocks the film lot. I see. The combination unlocks the brat. Okay, it's the opposite. That's all it takes. With this, the problem of the lock is solved. Your theory that she couldn't get in because she didn't know the combination no longer flies. Mm, regarding the lock, that certainly is a plausible explanation. Agent Lang, thank you for your clear explanation. Please, continue with what you were saying before. <laughs> if you're gonna give up, you better do it now. The two of them hid the president's body. I would think the first thing to do would be to inspect the costume before we bother with testimony. But fine, whatever. Supposing those two were accomplices, why would they have needed to leave the body hanging there for an entire day? Not so fast. Why don't you give it a rest and take a good hard look at reality? Thanks to their trickery, our investigation has been confused up until now. Doesn't that about answer your question? Got it? Those two hid the body. Inside that monster costume over there. So, let's look at it. Let's look at it. In the video, we cannot see the inside of the costume. So can you really say for certain that the body was placed inside? Yeah, I'll give you that much. In that case, why don't we try examining it? Yes! The inside of that costume. There might be some traces left inside. Mr. Powers, may we examine the inside of the costume? Uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, but it might be kind of stinky since I sweat a lot in there. And when I sweat, it smells like a dead body. This is... 
incredibly dirty. <laughs> That's strange. We always make sure to clean it after using it so that the sweat doesn't damage the car too. Isn't this just proof that someone besides you used this costume? Yes, but it's sweat, not blood. Like, do dead bodies sweat? I don't know enough about forensics to know that, but I would think there would be other evidence than sweat. I'd say that dirt from the body probably got into the costume. The president's body did fall on top of the monster's footprint. That must be where the dirt came from. Are you satisfied now? There's dirt inside the costume. It must have been gotten there when the body was hidden inside. Um, no, I'm not satisfied about dirt. So dirt got into the costume when the body was hidden inside. Wouldn't that mean that the dirt was transferred from the body? Huh, isn't that obvious? How else do you say it got there? There's dirt stuck everywhere inside the costume. He looks particularly bad around the chest area. Dirt around the chest? We can't overlook this fact. Mr. Lang's logic does seem to make sense. Indeed, if those two were accomplices, the crime certainly would have been possible. So it would be useless to argue that point. In that case, what should we do? Firstly, we should have Agent Lang explain his reasoning in more detail. Let's draw out more information. Alright, so... There's dirt inside the costume. It's been gotten there when the body was hidden inside. And I think we actually present the body because there's a huge yellow stain on his chest. He may not have had blood to get everywhere, but there would actually have been, he would have gotten yellow stuff all on the inside. It'd be really obvious, right? I'm gonna present the body. Dirt got into the costume and the body was hidden inside it. Is that really the case? You have a problem with that? There is a fair amount of dirt inside the front of the costume. Yeah, there is a lot of dirt. A whole lot. However, I would like you to focus on the state that the body is in. It's lying on top of the dirt, and yet there's no dirt on the front of the body. If the body really was inside the costume, then it's strange that the front of the body isn't stained with more dirt. Okay, so I got the right evidence for kind of the wrong reasoning, but it's fine, we're moving on. Uh, well then, how would you explain it? How did the dirt get inside the costume? From the video footage, it's very likely that someone was inside the costume. But just who could it have been? Hmm, where have I seen this? What's the matter, Kay? I just feel like I remember seeing something that looked like this dirt somewhere before. But where was it? There were these bits of grey fragments mixed in with the dirt. Grey fragments? There does seem to be something other than normal dirt mixed into it. Something must have gotten stuck to it, and lots of it, I might add. Something got stuck to it. This may merit a closer look. Where did we see dirt that looks like what's stuck on the inside of the costume? Where did we see dirt? Uh, the concrete... Was it in the closet or something? I don't think it's the IS-7 documents. Oh, 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 oh. Is it the dirt from the mechanics gloves? With bits of gray stuff in it. Super dirty gloves with gray stuff everywhere. This dirt has some gray bits mixed into it. Just like my favorite oatmeal. Huh? And what of it? We found an item belonging to a certain man that was covered in the same type of dirt. That is to say, these gloves. Those dirt stains certainly look the same, but tell me, just what exactly is this gray substance? The gray substance is... Um... Concrete? I want to say that it's concrete. <clears throat> but I actually don't know for sure. <clears throat> We're gonna guess that it's concrete. 
These grey substances must be fragments of concrete. You mean the stuff that was scattered around the monster's footprints? Exactly. Meanwhile, who do these gloves, which are stained with the same kind of dirt, belong to? Oh, oh, I remember! We found it at Blaze's place. <clears throat> Earlier today, we went to Blaze's garage. There we discovered these dirt-stained gloves. Come to think of it, there were also hammers, shovels, and other tools placed inside as well. In a garage? In a tool shed? Tools? I don't think so. Unlikely. Why would mechanics gloves, intended to be used on machines, be covered in dirt? If he broke the concrete with the hammer and then dug into the soil with the shovel, then it's only natural for dirt like that to get on the gloves. Then maybe... Yes, the true nature of the monster's footprints has been made clear. It's possible that these footprints were dug up by Blaze the Best himself. Not so fast. It's possible? Humph! <laughs> it's possible, you say? Please do enlighten me. Because I honestly have no clue why on earth would he do something like that? Why did he make the monster footprints? Think about it. The answer must be... Um... He buried something or he was digging something up. I think... Because you don't want to have buried something. I think he dug something up. It's possible he was digging something up. He probably meant went something like this. Last night at this spot, there was something that Blaze needed to dig up. For that reason, he broke the lock on the back door and sneaked. Snuck? He snuck into the field lot. Using the hammer and shovel, he set to work. He dug up all three of his giant Pac-Man medallions, buried there for safekeeping. He couldn't let the building be built atop them. He placed the items he dug up into his bag, but before he could fill in the holes... Ah, that's when John came to practice! Exactly. Blaze panicked and had no choice but to hide himself in the Mozilla costume nearby. Grrr. To think you would deduce so much from just a pair of dirt-stained gloves. However, all of this is merely a possibility. There's still no proof that he was the one who was hiding inside that costume. For all we know, he might have left the scene once he finished digging. Objection! On the contrary, such proof does exist and can be seen in the video. When this video was recorded, Blaze was definitely inside the film lot. What? Though I can't blame Agent Lang for not noticing. The difference between the current film lot and the one in John's video, along with the state of Blaze's garage, it's all too clear that Blaze was still here. What proves that Blaze was still at the film lot when this video was recorded? Um, what did that say? Is the bag that's behind that? Or is it the fact that there's a missing footprint? I wish I could look through the evidence a little bit more. I think it's his bag of tools. Take that. This bag placed near the costume. There was an identical one inside Blaze's garage. Ugh. First, the dirt on the gloves, and now the bag. It seems there is a connection. Hmm. And that's my proof. Blaze was inside the costume, or someone who was using his tools. Ego, the president's body, could not have hidden inside it. Yeah! It seems I was able to refute Agent Lang's reasoning. 